Like, no, man, you got to go to emergency room. Luckily, we're so already connected with the orthopedic surgeon because of our injuries. Was there like a jackass ward at the hospital at this point, just with the amount of calls? I mean, <laughs> it seems like it. It's episode 239 of the Cassius Morris Show. Thanks for tuning in to this brand new edition of the podcast. It's been a cool couple weeks, man. I have been experimenting with a lot of different uh, drugs. No, I'm just playing. I imagine if I said that. A lot of different uh, methods that I want to change the podcast up a little bit, man. This has been really cool. I've been having people over. We've been trying to set up a little thing in person, seeing what we can do. You know, I've had this weird hang up about doing things in person with content i always have been having this thing in my head that i want to go to a major city like a much much bigger city i'm not sure where yet but just somewhere that you know has more than a million or two people living in it and has a bigger cultural hub in terms of the quote unquote the arts i hate it when people say the arts but that's what it is and i realized something i said i know so many entertaining people here where i'm at and so many interesting people why don't I at least just try if I'm going to be here in this city that I'm not really looking to stay in for much longer? Why don't I at least do something with it while I'm here and try to get some of this in-person content going? I mean, I, I've talked about this before on the show, how when the, the whole pandemic happened and I stopped doing interviews with people in person, it it was a real loss for the show in a weird way and, and how I've always wanted that piece back. And now... I'm going to actually expand on that. And we have a lot of cool stuff coming for the show. We have two sponsors in the works that maybe even as soon as next episode you might be hearing from. One of them is confirmed. We're good to go. The other one we're still working on. Uh, but some sponsorships coming and just lots of big major things. But of course, the priority is bringing uh, the main the main events, these podcast interviews in the middle, and uh, that's what we're about to do today. We got Rick Kosick on the podcast today. Of course, the founding videographer of Jackass and the Wild Boys, and Jackass Forever, the new movie, is out in theaters everywhere on February 4th. It's, I'm really excited to see this movie, man. I got to tell you guys the truth. I've been a Jackass fan since I was a little kid, and... This is always something I've wanted to do. I have some kind of podcast with somebody from Jackass, and this was a really interesting one. You guys will, and you'll hear it in a second. I don't want to spoil it. You will not believe how hazardous being a cameraman for Jackass actually is. Uh, the line between stuntman and cameraman is thin and very blurred, um, and it's, it, was, it was really cool to, to get his insight. If you like the podcast that you're about to see, please make sure to click that subscribe button on YouTube and make sure to hit the little notification bell as well right next to it. But before we jump in, there's one story that you guys probably figured I would talk about and I would definitely be, be uh, not doing my job properly if I didn't talk about this. Neil Young has just waged an all-out war on Joe Rogan. Yes, the rock icon himself released a statement absolutely trampling Joe Rogan. Neil Young says, Please immediately inform Spotify that I'm actively canceling all of my music availability on their platform as soon as possible. He writes, quote, I'm doing this because Spotify is spreading false information about vaccines, potentially causing death to those who believe the disinformation being spread by them. He continues, please act on this immediately today and keep me informed on the time schedule. Spotify can have me or Joe Rogan. A scathing threat from the 70-some-year-old rocker. Uh, look, I'm not going to sit here and try to throw shade at Neil Young, man. That would be not a wise choice. I, I Listen, I've publicly gone on record and said I love Neil Young. I think he's obviously one of the greatest artists probably ever. Probably the greatest artist to ever come out of Canada. But this is silly, and I'm not going to mince words. Neil Young is making himself sound like an old man. He sounds out of touch. Uh, you know, some of the stuff he said in this statement was particularly unfortunate. One of the main quotes was he says that most of Spotify listeners would not believe that Spotify would willingly mislead them with information. Uh, it, it's beyond their comprehension that that may happen. But I think the main mistake that Neil Young is making here, man, is why do you want to go against the biggest general in the army? It's like me trying to 
you know, be a little independent island in the middle of nowhere trying to go to war with a major country. And it's not like Neil Young is nothing. Again, huge record sales, huge reach. But the reality is, and I think a lot of people see it this way, boys tell stories about the men. And when you're sitting there running your mouth, one of the most successful artists ever in the music industry, and you're sitting there wringing your fists thinking about Joe Rogan, that doesn't make you seem like the man to me. That makes Joe Rogan seem like the man. That makes Joe Rogan seem like the guy everybody's talking about. But that makes whoever is doing it towards him kind of look like a bitch. I got to be honest, man. I don't think you should be throwing stones when somebody is at literally the height of a legacy career that is going to go down in history as one of the most legendary of all time in his field. You do not throw stones at that person just in the same way that you would have been crazy to go up against Howard Stern in his heyday. When Howard Stern was ruling on K-Rock, when he first started on Sirius Radio and even before that, you would have been off your fucking rocker to say anything about Howard Stern because you would probably get destroyed and buried. Equally, if you decided to go to a radio station that you were on, that Howard Stern was also airing on, and you told them it's me or Howard, guess who they would have kept? So I think this is a huge miscalculation. Uh, Spotify has gone ahead and removed Neil Young's music, saying they regret to have, have to, to have had to have done it. Also noting, and I think this is important to note for the story, that they've removed or moved over 20,000 podcasts related to COVID. It looks like Spotify does have a plan to combat misinformation. And I just think it's a bad look. It's a bad look. Don't talk about the king. Whether you think he should be king or not, it doesn't make a difference. Kind of like the president. Like, I get it. Some people like the president. Some people don't. You, that's where it ends though. Whatever you feel about it is not going to change the circumstance. You're entitled to your opinion and you're definitely entitled to say it, but it's not going to change the circumstance. So that's my rant for the beginning of the episode. Um, I'm going to try it out having some guests in the intro to do the intro with me. That's one of the things that I'm, I'm thinking about starting to do. Um, so this segment in the beginning, will pick something to talk about. It won't always be just me and I'm going to try bringing different people in. And, and, you know, like I talked about off the beginning, man, making do with what I have. So without further ado, let's jump into this podcast with Rick Kosick. Awesome episode, man. Like I said, just a, a really interesting story from this dude. He's, he's gone all around the world with his craft, with his videography, uh, Jackass is celebrating their 20 year anniversary. It's huge. And I really hope you guys enjoy this, man. Rick Kosick, thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. 100%. I like the guitar in the back there. That's uh, what, what type of brand am I seeing back there? Well, that's an Epiphone. And that's, you see that one right there on the couch? That's a, this is it. my GNL. Ooh, that's a nice looking guitar. This thing is like a piece of furniture. It's super heavy. It's it's fucking badass. Mm. Love it. Play it every night. How long have you played? Uh, since Guitar Hero came out. Oh, okay. So like what, 2003, four? Yeah, I got, you know, everyone in the office kept devoting so much attention into a stupid game, thinking they were going to play guitar. I'm like, this is dumb. I'm never going to play this game again. So I picked up a guitar and never stopped that's nuts man every time i try to play i feel like i'm not that coordinated i'm a drummer so like whenever i try to go to the guitar i feel like it's, it's totally like a different part of the brain well you know you see that's weird because i feel like a lot of drummers are also guitar players you know so mm -hmm. or do you play piano no but that that's the, the next thing i'm looking into actually i think it's uh probably a little more you know satisfying because you can hit those notes quicker you know i mean Guitar, you have to condition your fingers. It takes a little bit more time, but I don't know. I love it, man. It's, I feel like it's an endless pit of tones you can go find and discover and pet all these different pedals. And I just got a little cheapy beginner amp still. I mean, I want to get a tube hmm. amp. Okay, yeah. So I can really open it up, you know? Maybe some That's pedals like, and some different stuff. Oh, man. I just, I'm itching to get all that going. 
are you more of a music listener or a music player? Would you say both? You both. Know, really yeah. heavy into it. Yeah, I'm looking to you know finally I want to start jamming with people and just having fun and just doing something creative like on a Friday night. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, in terms of the videography and stuff, I mean, when did that sort of come in? I mean, like, was that when you were a kid that you became interested or maybe when you got a little older? Well, all that kind of started when we were doing Big Brother magazine and we started making our own videos that to kind of correlate with the magazine. And uh, it started, you know, by just picking up a camera and going for it. And one of the first videos I've ever made for the video for Big Brother was this little featurette on this guy named Johnny Lee County and you can find it on my YouTube channel. And he's like wearing this uh, yellow Devo outfit. And he's this guy from South Central that loves punk rock music and loves skateboarding grew up. And he's just this older guy that still was still into it. I think he still is into it after all these years and just was actually really good, you know? And, uh, Hmm skated in front of his house it's kind of it was like okay we're gonna do all this so i i went there i shot an interview with him first for the magazine and he lived in a pretty rough neighborhood let's just say and so i I, I figured you know if i'm gonna go do this i'm not gonna roll with a crew of dudes because that's like we're looking for trouble you know yeah i went early in the morning by myself figuring everyone's still asleep so Got in there, got out, got the photos, got out. And then I eventually went back and shot the whole video, which was just, God, I still remember just that night leaving the editing bay, just on cloud nine, seeing what we, you know, we created. And it was so cool, you know, and it's a really fun video. How did you find all these characters? Because I can imagine like the skateboard scene, Big Brother, there must have been so many different characters that maybe we've never even heard of that were involved. A lot of times it's just, you know, I, I think word of mouth more back then, because obviously there's no internet and people submitting like for Johnny Lee County, he submitted a sponsor me tape to one of the companies at world industries. And the guy, Mark, Abba was like, Hey, check this guy out. You should do a story on him. We're like, Oh my God. Yeah. The perfect, you know? And he had his, obviously he wrote a letter with his number and we reached out to him. That's how it was, you know? And, or you, you know, you meet these people at trade shows, because there used to be like big gatherings for, you know, the ASR trade show back in the day. And so you go meet all these people. And so, you know, it just it slowly trickle out like that. So for Big Brother, was that something that it was your like brainchild or was that something that was already established when you started filming for that? Well, Big Brother was already uh, in operation. It was owned by uh, World Industries skateboard owner named Steve Rocco. And uh, at a trade show, I met Jeff Tremaine and Sean Cliver and Mark McKee. And then they asked if I wanted to shoot photos for it. And because back then I was a photographer and um, I was like, yeah, man, that sounds great. And I just had this weird instinct that it was going to be a really life changing decision, Hmm. you know? Interesting. And pan 20 years later, look, we're making our fourth jackass film, you know? So. Yeah, it was a, a right decision, I would have to say. At what point did it really start to sort of move from the skateboard content to like stunts and different things like that? Would you say that was Johnny Knoxville sort of coming in at that point? Well, Knoxville was writing for the magazine. He was doing little articles here and there. And uh, so that kind of we would film them and kind of collect the footage and kind of when it came time to put the video out, you know, he would shoot the photos, but hold on to the footage, you know? So obviously the story would come out. You see all oh, this, this crazy guy, Johnny Knoxville is shooting himself with a, with a 38 and with a, with a bulletproof vest. And, and then finally the footage, you know, surfaced and people were just like, wow, this is nuts, you know, and to see it on, on video. And obviously you can see all this now on the uh, dumb documentary that's playing on Hulu. And, um, yeah, that's just kind of, it was just wild just to see it kind of just, you know, give birth in, and then kind of like one thing led to another. And then, you know, they, we, I guess I'm speeding, you know, up to where we made a pilot and then Jeff and Spike and PJ or Johnny Knoxville went pitched it. Yeah. Cause Jeff was really good friends childhood friends with Spike Jones. 
Okay. So there was a, a bunch of connections in the circle that already oh, existed too. Yeah. Man, you know, it's it's so wild to think, like you're saying, 20 years later. I mean, did you ever think that at this point there would be another Jackass movie, like at this stage in everybody's life? You know, I I always think like a, when we make the last movie, like say like Jackass 3D, like this is it, man, we're done, you know, and it's been great. It's been amazing. And I'm grateful to have been a part of it. And then it took 10 years, I think it's been to for it to come around for the fourth one. But I'm glad it did, you know, and uh, yeah, obviously we're older, you know, and but that's why we looped in like these new guys. And, you know, when we tested them back in two, wait, what was it? It was 2000, in the 2019, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before the pandemic. Right. We did a test shoot with these guys and it ripped, you know, it was like the, the, and there was like the energy was there, you know, you could just tell when things are working, you know, and, and it was fun and everyone was just connecting. And, and then we got into production with these guys and everyone and we started going for like a week and all of a sudden er, fucking pandemic hit and they just pulled the plug and we were Man. done for like eight months. It so like, it's a while in the making then. Yeah. It Man. was sucked. Did, did that make it more special now that it's coming out? Because I mean, first you had like, maybe it would never happen. And then the pandemic. Yeah. You know, I guess you could look at it like that. It, it definitely makes it more special. I think, you know, we, we finished it, even though we, we made a movie during the middle of the pandemic and a lot of times we're all wearing masks and we had to, and you know, sometimes I'm like, cause like either I'm shooting with a big, big camera when we're doing like the, the, the bits or I'm running around with a little running gun camera. I'm just trying to like get any, like those little, interstitial dialogue that a lot of times you see in the movie and so i could just jump on to someone who we're about to shoot someone i'll, I'll go find steve and say hey ask him a question about what we're about to do and does with those little cameras and and i'll be like hey take your mask off hey say right. again, take your mask off you know because everyone's walking with a mask so you'll so for a little s- quote you'll get them to take it off absolutely you know and so sometimes they forget to take it off and they're all blah, 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 blah. you right. just like take that mask off come on you know tough on the mics yeah you can't see the mouth movement and it's just silly it's a challenge i mean it, so how hard was it though i mean was that the extent of the challenges making a movie through the pandemic or, or were there other things that made it really tough or not tough i, I think well one of the challenges we were going to shoot like in other states like we were going to go back to florida and we were planning on maybe shooting in New Orleans, you know, and uh, all that came to an end. And we just shot around outer parts of Los Angeles, like an hour out here, there, there, and never in the city. And that's how we we had to run, you know, and this is the way it was. And it sucked, but we made it work. And it's really, I think the, the end product is great, man. I think this movie is really fun, you know, and it's funny and. And I think it's coming at a time when people really need to laugh, man. We've had it tough, yeah. you know, and then everyone's just probably just, just, ugh, I mean, I just want to laugh. And so I think this movie delivers. You know, I, I definitely, from what I've seen, I, I think it's going to be super, super fun. I totally agree. I mean, I'm wondering maybe about the dynamic on the set with the guys now that, you know, I, I'd say most of them are sober. If not, all the guys are sober at this point. Um, I'm just wondering, like, how does that change the dynamic on set just from your perspective as a filmmaker between the guys? Well, I think coming to set sober, you know, cause most of the time, like when you, when we were, when you're out of town and you're in a hotel lobby, what are you going to do? You're going to have a drink. Right. So uh, when you come to set the next day, you're a little foggy, you know? And so when the pranks are coming at you, you're a little dull. Mm-hmm. So it was harder to probably prank people of the cast because everyone came to set from home. They're not drinking and they're bringing their end game. They're just, everyone is on and everyone killed it, but you know, maybe it was a little tougher to prank the guys because they're just not a little slow from having a few cocktails and that before. When, when people talk about like the height of it with the whole gang, like from an outside perspective, do you think it's, less crazy than people think or more crazy than people think just the whole state of the culture, so to speak of jackass. Cause the guys will, I mean, I've seen interviews they say it's just was wild. 
On the new movie? Yeah, it was pretty wild, you know, and uh, especially when uh, Knoxville got knocked out by the by the bull. It, that thing was, whew, it was a scary moment. I mean, I was like, oh, man, he was knocked out for, it seemed like a long time, you know? Right. He you said know? that was maybe the worst hit he's ever taken. Oh, by far, 100%. And it was scary. Like, I'm just like, am I watching the last seconds of my friend, you know, and like, who knows, you know, and yeah, he got rocked bad. How does that feel when, when you're, because you're obviously in a relationship with him as well, uh, personally, you know, how does that feel to see that happen to him? Well, seeing it happen in person is one thing. There were supposed to be more stuff we we're going to do that day with the animals and it ruined the whole day. That day was okay. done, you know, yeah. and so we kind of like uh, went and did some like, stupid shit you know like maybe they didn't make the movie and just it's going to be in the f- 4.5 you know but still fun you know but yeah it, it, it definitely took the wind out of the sails that day do you think there will be a 4.5 or is that just speculation oh, there, there will be there'll be a 4.5 there will be awesome wow so that's that's really exciting then for the fans yeah i mean there's a lot of footage mm-hmm. i mean not everything makes the movie it's always how it's always been with all the films so yeah how many hours would you say of footage is there usually left? Like, is there footage left from a 0.5 movie that maybe we've never seen? No, if there, that's, okay. if there was to be a, if there was to be another movie, start from all over, you know? So there's no point. Uh, uh, but I mean, I mean, there's a lot of stuff for the 4.5. So, I mean, it's just, that's how it is with every film. There's always extra footage. Definitely. You know, in, in terms of Steve-O, because, you know, going back to the sobriety, I think it's it's so incredible to see him in, in such a lucid state. Um, you know, just curious on maybe your reflection with him and, and just how far he's come in general as a person. It's incredible what Steve has done with his life in the last 10 years. I mean, he started sobriety on the third film and uh, obviously you're going to have your ups and downs, but he fought through it. And what he's turned his whole life into is so inspiring. Um, he's a machine and he, he has his ongoing comedy tour. That's an interactive show. So he films all these crazy stunts and then kind of has like, you know, it's intertwined with his, what his whole stage act and man, he's selling out theaters across the country. I mean, it's insane. So he is just, it blows my mind of what it is proven, you know, you know, a testament that like you could do anything you want with your life and sobriety, you know, will just amplify that. You know, if, if steve can turn his life around and kill it and same with Novak. Mm, yeah. You know, incredible he's what he's amazing. done too. He's doing amazing. And I, and I hope our other buddy can see that and learn that and want to really go with that and embrace it, you know, and it's, there's none. Listen, man, life has so much to offer when you're sober. Hmm. You just have to go for it, you know, and not be afraid and not make excuses and complain. And, uh, you know, we don't need to go down that road, but, yeah. you know. But do you think it's possible? Do you think that that's, or are you just hoping? Hoping. Yeah. You know, it's up to that. It's up to him. Definitely. And of course, everybody wishes well for, you know, their family and friends that that totally makes sense. You know, I mean, thinking back to the wild boys days, too. I mean, so much insane stuff. I mean, is there any any moments that you can think of sort of behind the scenes with Steve and the guys like that, that you just couldn't believe or or that really made a lasting impression on you? Man, there's with there is so many educational moments when I worked on that show. And when I look back at those times, it's probably the best thing I've ever done in my life wow. to be able to have traveled around the world, all these different continents. Uh, one of my strongest, you know, memories, I, we were in Siberia in this area called Salakard, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's way, way up in the no- uh, North hemisphere. And we had to fly in these helicopters to find these nomadic reindeer people. I mean, there's no roads. Nothing. Holy! So we landed, and they in our our buffers, you know, they who communicate with these people. Say, hey, brought them stuff. Like, hey, this is what we want to do with you guys. They are you cool with it? And they were 
totally open to the idea of filming with us and hanging out with us. And it was like the best day of my life. And to be at one moment sitting in a teepee just blew my mind. Wow. Yeah, I'm in the middle of nowhere, you know? And it's Authentic just, as it gets. Yeah, I'm their guest you know, in their teepee. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a great day, man. It was the funnest day. and went by like that. And uh, yeah, man, it's just really cool. And just this, to experience all that and going to India and then Africa, Mexico and uh, parts of Thailand was incredible. It was just, it can go on and on and on. And Wild Boys, it seemed like there was a lot more traveling in that series too. So that must've been really something special. Man, I remember coming home from Africa lying halfway off my couch. I was so tired. I was home for five days. And then we left for Asia for four weeks of filming. And then we came, you know, so it's like, it was a wow. lot of travel, you know, but it was, man, like I said, it was awesome. I loved it. No regrets. That's cool. Um, one, one question that we got sent in here was about uh, Jackass Forever, of course, coming out on the 4th of February. Everybody's got to check that out. Um, what was the number one I can't watch moment while you were filming this movie? Uh, you know, I would probably just see Knoxville getting knocked out. It's just right. Probably, it's it's intense. But um, wow. did you guys yeah. consider not putting it in the movie or or was no. it? No, it's got to go in. I it's got to go in. He would want yeah. it in no matter what, I think. Yeah, I mean, come on. He got rocked. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> he has to put it in, dude. It's like, if it was like anyone else who got a serious injury, probably would not make it in, you know? But it, that, you got to put it in. It's pretty intense. Who do you think has the biggest pain tolerance in Jackass? Uh, physically or emotionally? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Physically. <laughs> uh, uh man it's tough uh I, I maybe it could be danger aaron it could possibly be uh steve-o or uh you know maybe even knoxville i will i would say those are my top contenders you know like it's hard to say you know it's tough it's tough competition like when you start comparing it and i've been thinking about it because one thing i went through this past year is i recovered from a super crazy concussion and mm -hmm one of the petty little recovery things I tried to do was looking at jackass and being like, if they're good, I'm good pretty much. But it sort of bleeds into a real question. Like, has there ever been an injury that's stopped you guys from filming for a super long time or, or that was super tough for them to do? Cause I mean, it's almost hard to believe how these guys do it. I think when Knoxville got, if I remember correctly, um, when you got injured, we were down for a few weeks. Yeah. We just stopped. So, yeah, he was in the hospital for a few days. And so, yeah, it, it took some time. And so we were down for a little bit. We, so it was just another like, all right, we'll be back in a few weeks. You know, it was like no big at this point. I mean, we've been starting to stop in so many times. So, but we just kept trucking along, you know, and, and uh, yeah. So uh, I even got injured on the movie. Did you? Yeah. Uh, some, uh, I don't want to mention names of who it was, but because uh, just I, it was an accident. But yeah, uh, one of the guys fell on my ankle and broke my fibula. That's the small bone that runs along the uh, parallel with your ankle, you know. So fell, heard this pop, you know, and uh, I was like, oh. it was like, like last couple of days of principal filming, we were shooting the opener, and someone fell on me and. Next, you know, I'm going, being taken to urgent care. And they're like, no, man, you got to go to your uh, emergency room. You need to see the orthopedic surgeon right away. Luckily, we're so already connected with the orthopedic surgeon because of our injuries, you know. So right now I'm on my way to Keck USC meeting this guy who happens to work on all the uh, LA Kings hockey team. Hmm. And he's all the x-rays like, oh, yeah, you're going to have surgery. And so we're going to schedule that for like seven days from now. And and then the, they put a cast on me. But as I put in the cast, and the woman goes, okay. And she has to pop it back into place. Oh, so now it hurts once. It hurts twice in a day. They don't put double impact, pain. double impact, no pain meds. Fuck, I yelled super loud. It was like, and then, oh, man. 10 months. I'm just now like 
my legs getting strong again, you know, and I'm, I went, you know, I can walk a lot better than I have in 10 months. And wow. it's just got infected. It was brutal. Got infected. Holy shit. Yeah. It wasn't mending correctly. And so they mm. had to like go into wound care, scrape up all the, and put like this iodine clay collagen powder. And that just healed it immediately. It's amazing what things can happen. That's, and, and that's nuts though, that you mentioned that you, you guys knew the surgeon. Was there like a jackass ward at the hospital at this point, just with the <laughs> amount of calls? I mean, <laughs> uh, it seems like it would be, but yeah, they're all like, you know, but yeah, it's just, oh man, it's, it's, an, it's the nature of the beast, man. Just if you can stay, if you can avoid the injury part, you're good. Yeah. Which is tough though. It sounds like this, this, I mean, might've been one of the crazier projects. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but this sounds pretty nuts. I, you know, it's hard to say, I think I'm desensitized. So when you see, yeah. you can let me know if it was probably the one of the crazier ones are, you know, and you know, it's hard to say. I, I feel like I've been exposed to so much shit, you know, that uh, it's hard to say, you know, like that's all been fun, you know? No doubt. One people, th- one thing people love about you is, uh, of course, the famous gagging scenes in the movies. Uh, w- was that something that you always had a gag reflex, like to to just get sick, or was that did that come from Jackass? I think it's just something that's like, you know, when someone yawns in the room and they go, <gasps> and right, you know, it, it, it passes right. along. Yeah. So so like if Steve was like going, oh, oh, it's kind of it's like this contagious kind of. You know, <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I'd gag too much. I was kind of like trying to stay focused and then being in the pocket <laughs> of filming and like, all right, just don't, don't give in, don't give in, you know? Yeah. So. You guys all do such a great job though. Cause like, this is like a war zone for a camera person. If you really think about it and, and you guys are capturing all these shots, like it, you're putting in, you know, half the action or as much as they are. Sure. Yeah. It's uh it's a collaborative effort. Let's just put it that way. How about the opening scenes? I know you mentioned those. I mean, those must be super challenging to, to put together. Yeah, that's that's actually where I got injured on is the opening scene. And uh, but this opening scene for this movie is probably the best one. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. I guess I guess we can't give too much away. What well, one question I will ask, uh, is there any maybe surprise appearances from any cast members or any non-cast members that maybe we can expect in this film. I think you've probably seen the machine gun. Kelly is going to be in it and Tyler, the creator, Eric Andre, uh, a few others. I just can't remember off the top of my head right now, but those, but yeah, there's a, it's, it's going to be a fun little ride. And I think it's going to be great for everyone to, to participate and watch in theaters. We have two more quick questions before I let you go, just from some fans that sent them in. Um, I The name, unfortunately, isn't here. He says, how did you get involved with the Deftones back in the 90s? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm looking at my album, my, my gold record right there. Uh, I got involved with them through a friend who worked at Maverick Records at the time. And she's like, gives me this tape. And she's like, oh, my God you got to check this band out. You're going to totally dig them. And they like skateboarding and BMX. So I'm like, all right, cool. And like anyone, you just fucking throw the tape in your car. You know, <laughs> that's back when there was cassette tapes, you know, like. Right. Yeah. And then finally one day I put them in. I'm like, whoa, these guys sound pretty cool, you know. And I think the introduction, ha- you know, happened. And then I just started going, seeing them perform all the time in Hollywood at these little clubs. Hmm before they got really big. And then uh, we just hit it off. And, you know, one thing led to another, they flew me up to Seattle when they were recording around the fur. And I was just taking photos on my my own will. And no one was like no direction or anything. And then, you know, after there's a lot of after hours activities, let's just say when Mm -hmm. they were up there. And so we're all hanging on the pool area and I just, happened to take two pictures of that girl oh wow only two and i was doing a certain technique that you know it's a it's called bulb bulb you you know yeah and so what it is like you set your aperture a certain amount 
mm-hmm. in the shut and you activate the closure of the or opening of the shutter by you know when you press it so as long as you keep it pressed down the shutter is open right and so i would go open and i have a flash that's not connected to the camera mm. and it just pop it and it just kind of gives its own little vibe as a you know some work some don't you know right and in that one, I got two, nailed it somehow. And actually, those are my feet next to her on the cover. So if anyone's wondering, those are my feet. <laughs> that's nuts. Wow. That that that's good for people to know. Uh the last question was what uh, maybe maybe it was that one. What non-jackass project uh had the biggest impact on you or was your favorite? None. Uh hmm. probably the biggest would be. The best would be Wild Boys, oh, probably yeah. my favorite. But I also had a lot of fun shooting uh, the King of the Road TV show series. Mm. That was on Viceland. I don't know if you guys recall it. I do, yeah. I saw that. It was a couple years ago, right? Yeah, so I did all three seasons. Wow. That was uh, a lot of fun because it you know, brought me back into the whole skate scene to see how everyone is, but but to see how it's changed after all these years and – and we're there like just to be kind of like documenting it, but not directing it, but just kind of flowing with it and just mm. shooting what's happening. We don't make any decisions for them other than just filming. And the first series was nuts because, you know, obviously we don't know the format, how this is going to work. Right. So we are just killing ourselves 15 hours a day, three hours of sleep. And at one point, they were trying to tell me I had to be my own DIT. And I'm like, come on, dude. I mean, like, it's impossible. DIT is? Guy who downloads all the media after your day. Okay. So, uh, it's, it's impossible. So Yeah, that's that's two people's jobs. <laughs> exactly. And so eventually it became, uh, we had a rolling DIT. So oh, wow. the three vans it would be the production van, our PA van, and then the team van. Hmm. So the guy in the back would be in the, in the, 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 the PA van would be in the back. He had this whole desk, everything set up or man, he's constantly downloading throughout the day because I think season three, we were shooting a terabyte and a half a day. Wow. That's um, insanity. It's insanity. So it's like four cameramen, bunch of GoPros. Yeah, man, we're just cranking constantly. And wow. But by the third season, we really had it down more where we're like, all right, well, you know what? We're going to go to the hotel. You guys do your thing. If um, the Thrasher filmers know, we kind of directed them enough to where they kind of taught them how to have them do this, you know? So that way we can go get some rest because, you know, fuck, we're tired, you know? Right. But yeah, that show was fun, man. I was just, just so stoked when we went to Hawaii on it. And it was just crazy. It was just staying in an Airbnb house on on the other side of the island. I thought we were going to be Waikiki, but we weren't. This nice house made it super relaxing. I was like, oh, this is incredible. I was Man. really happy. It was great. That's so cool. And it's amazing where uh, where your craft has taken you, man. And, and Rick, thanks so much for taking the time to share some insight with me. I, I seriously appreciate it. Yeah, and just to let your viewers know, I do have a YouTube channel. I'm working on a new project right, uh, right now called Relentless Ones. Yes. Uh, it's a series that I'm trying to follow people, and uh, I'm building it out to eventually to sell it, you know, but right now it's just a testing ground. And I, I got a f- bunch of episodes in the works right now. So I got three out. I mean, I mean, got two out right now. I got three more coming. So, yeah, please check it out. Awesome. We'll put a link for that in the description below. And Jackass Forever, February 4th. Make sure to go check it out. Yes, please. You you guys are going to have a good time. I want to give a huge shout out to Rick Kosick for making the time to check in with me today. This is a podcast that was a long time in the making, man. I think we first got in touch in October uh yeah probably i want to give a big shout out to uncle hack for stopping by the podcast you know end of january now we're just getting to it but that just goes to show all these different intros and outros when i said we've got big shit coming we got stuff in the works i really meant it uh so this is one of those things and we continue to have more things planned so definitely make sure to check me out everywhere on social media at cassius morris at cassius morris underscore on instagram 
And the show is at Cash's Show on all these platforms as well. Please make sure to click that subscribe button if you enjoyed what you've seen and heard today. That's on YouTube with the notification bell. Make sure to hit that right next to the subscribe as well. And on our audio platforms, that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio. Uh, Shout out Sweden, Australia, United Kingdom, Canada, and... I think, yeah, that was that was it. I had the top four. Shout out to the top four countries that uh, we have been downloading. All the other countries, I've been seeing you guys. You guys have been showing mad love. And make sure to go subscribe to all of these platforms. Let's get the subscribers up. If you're an audio listener, if you just like to listen, whether you're in the car, working, at the gym, and even if you don't watch YouTube, I would highly appreciate if you would subscribe on any YouTube account that you have. You don't got to watch it. You just got to subscribe. As long as you're listening to the audio, it's cool. Um, But I'm trying to get those subs up. The more subscribers I get, the bigger guests I can bring, the better the content will be. That's unfortunately the way it works. I like just sitting here having a good time with you guys chatting. Um, But the more subs, the more guests, the bigger content. Quick little side note. We just celebrated one year of the Inner Sleeve podcast, uh, which is my show over at Watch Mojo and Sound Mojo. Shout out to everybody over there, man. I just wanted to say this has been an incredible experience for me. Just so, so cool from beginning to, I guess, still middle, and we haven't ended it yet. Um, It's just been incredible. You know, joining a team at a company like this, which, you know, I grew up watching. I literally grew up watching Watch Mojo with my sister and my friends and we'd sit for hours and just watch it having sleepovers, you know, all that stupid shit that you do when you're a kid. Um, And now, you know, working alongside this company, helping put together not only new content and fresh content for them, but content that, you know, I grew up watching. I've got to be hands on on a lot of the top tens and edit those. And I'm doing a lot of voiceovers for different stuff now. And, you know, this is my first year and my first job really in my field in the business that I've worked my entire life to be in Um, and reaching the one year point and we were signed on for one year 52 shows and we're pushing show 60 now with no signs of stopping Uh, you know the ultimate compliment just the ultimate uh, I'm just really grateful and, and really happy about it and I thought about it and it's just, I'm, I'm glad. I, I feel like I've finally made the transition. Uh, and I don't plan on going back, man. I want to work in this field, in my field, doing what I love for a living. I don't want to go back, you know? So this is, uh, it's been uh, very emotional anytime I think about it. I try not to think about it too much. There's a lot of work to do. Um, but if you guys want to check me out there, I have a new show every single Friday on Sound Mojo, and we have a brand new episode up with the man himself, Steve Vai, which was so, so cool, and this is like a retrospective sort of of his career. We have him react to some of the most insane moments in his entire career, which was so cool. We showed him videos. We watched it with him. He reacts. We talk about his new record called Inviolate, available everywhere on the 28th of January, we talk about his brand new Hydra guitar, which is an invention he made. Steve Vai, probably the favorite person I've ever had the pleasure to chat with through the podcast. I think if I really look through the past, uh, you know, over a decade almost now, um, Steve would have to be it. Because it's like I got to meet him under the weirdest circumstances. So when I first had Steve on the podcast, I was obviously I knew who he was, otherwise I wouldn't have requested to have him on. But I don't think I realized the level of his impact, really, or the scale of like what he's done in the guitar space and what he's done in music in general with his innovation. And so I had the respect factor and I dug his music, I loved his music, but I didn't have like that starstruckness that you would have. You know what I mean? If you know you're about to talk to one of the greatest guitar players probably in history, that sets a bit of a different tone than if you know it's a major artist who you have a lot of respect for. Um, But, you know, there's only so many people who are like pretty much the greatest to ever do what they do. And that first interview was so pure because I wasn't psyched out by that. And it was just like having a super cool conversation with 
which is a cool guy. And also, he didn't look like he looked very different when he first came on the podcast with me. He didn't have the long Vi hair. He didn't have any of the accessories. He had a hat on and a beard. And I don't think he's ever publicly had a beard. And it was almost like it felt like I was talking to the real Vi. Like when I first met him, um, it, it was just really one of the most fascinating and, and mind expanding conversations I've ever had as a young man. Just hearing how he navigated through his insane life and the years with Frank Zappa and being near suicide from a nervous breakdown. All of these things, it, it was intense. And to talk about the ego and stuff like that with him, that uh, it made a big impact on me, man. So to chat with him again, you know, the first time he wasn't in Vi mode, this time he was in Vi mode. Like he's sitting there, he's got a guitar, he got his long hair, he's got his Vi glasses on. He's got so it, it was just so fascinating. I felt like I got to see two sides of a coin, like his the professional Vi and the personal Vi. Um, so just really a, an incredible person, and really a person who. I will never forget chatting with, yeah, for the rest of my life. So thank you guys so much for checking into this podcast, man. I've taken up enough of your time. Make sure to hit up all those socials. Check me out. And we'll be back with some fresh new content next week. Take care, guys.